Clarity flows of your part, the inspiration flows of your part is much more. And at the inspiration level, it uses many vocabularies which has no parallel either in common parlance or in philosophy. Alam on viva, Uddip on viva. What was the difficulty using the word object? Is an object the alam? Is a karana, they will call bhava. Is a shamashtara, they will call bhava. Why? And how this bhav transforms is also extraordinarily clear aesthetic account is there, but not the philosophical account. And this point has to be very carefully heard you and wonderful. I have learned so much. But are we going to propound that art, Indian art developed without philosophy? Is it possible? It's, it's, it's a fundamental question. If you are saying that there was no philosophy, means there should be no art, one thing. And there was no a specific philosophical development, but we have so many references from six limbs to Advaita Shankaracharya. Because art was so intimately associated with the life. So the philosophy of life became the philosophy of art. So as you have, you have underlined in your, that they, they, they perhaps did not require to specifically mention about it. So uh, philosophy must have been there. And without philosophy, we cannot think of having any art expression in any form. Sir, moreover, sir, <coughs> you rejected all the three traditions of philosophy. Sir, strict Goito, Kashmiri Sovietism, and Advaitism. And you, you just told us that it is nine who should be accepted. And you have not given us. Uh, the explanation, why not should be taken up. Now, <coughs> both this question, but first teacher, as I told you, you are correct. I have never said that there was no philosophy in art, but there was no philosophy of art at all. As I gave the example, <coughs> some of the great names, Patanayak, uh, Lulat, Shankuko, I also mean, they have their philosophical background, but they never uh, made their philosophical knowledge to bear upon the clarification of art, except in one single aspect. You see, all the entire literature, they are caring for only Yosho Dishpati, nothing else. But is philosophy confined to that? Why they have not given any philosophical account of the concept of how? I give one example and it will be clear. You say that Kashmishimism and Advaita Vedanta. Advaita Vedanta and Shanko can give a literal meaning to Chitta Dhrava. It's possible. Literal meaning. Kashmishimism cannot. Because in both Advaita Vedanta and Shanko, Chitta is something material. It, it, it is amenable to change and transformation. But what is Kashmishimism? It's Chitta. Chitta is consciousness. So Chitta Shanko is consciousness. That is Chitta. And consciousness cannot transform. This anomaly is there. <coughs> they have to be clarified and they have never tried to do that. But all is not to be done by them. Some others should have done it. But nobody has done it. Why it is the, why is the reason? I have, I have, my knowledge is very limited. I never have found it. Why? Why, who led them to prefer the concept of bhava to shanashtar? They also sometimes use bhashan. Why that unubhava and vibhava and not cause? Any, any explanation, any text, I have not seen it. There is a good reason there. And that reason has to be found. And about Supadanandaji, I have not rejected anything. Who am I to dare to reject Shankaracharya's view? I refer to actually you neglect the Bodhisattva Sarsha. Instead of rejecting it, I have tried to draw your attention. Who has read Bodhisattva Sarsha in this respect? Why not point it I just said, I said, one has not been tried, and that should also be tried. So, why not try it from this dualistic point of view, which has not been attempted? Why it is superior? 
Why is it a superior view? I have said that. I am not giving judgment. It has not tried anything. <coughs> and if you try to uh, argue, why you said that, of course I can enter. That's a different thing. But I am not arguing. It has not been done as yet. There was one more question. I think. Yes. <coughs> Uh, it is not a question. You know? yeah. I was uh, really mesmerized by your, uh, as always, Shihalama. Very good. But you, st you started with saying that you'll be giving us some utility work. And uh, we have to find out what is what is meant by your utility of utility. Two things I told you. One thing is this company. The same utility as there is in aesthetics, Alukya Shastra, Kapusha, so on. They have given two. That this Arth Shastra, working artists may ignore it, but it has some purpose. If one takes a lesson in aesthetics, then he will become a better art creative artist and also a better art appreciator. This has been said. They can avoid some defects and also can ensure that the more successful artist and the more successful art producer. This has been said. The same is with philosophy. If you show up your art is done, then he, it will enhance his ability to become a successful creator, creative artist. But I have given more than that. That aesthetics can be supplemented with shows of your power, much more clarity can be introduced and without losing anything on the aspect of a defining effect. The art will remain equally analytical clarity and a defining effect. So mystification there will be not. Sir, I, I totally had ignoramus in the field and uh, a layman, of course. So I take it as a layman's question uh, from a non-philosopher. But you know, when talking of the philosophy of art, sometimes one may be tempted to make too much of the art of philosophizing. Uh, what I mean to say is that you know, there is of course a professional technical way of philosophizing and that I would call the art of philosophizing. But at the same time, is it possible to, to, uh, to conceive of uh, art or in fact any human activity without a meaning that the agent or the actor attaches to it? And in that sense, there is really, there can be no human action without a philosophy. And what my question is, obviously you know all this, what I'm asking is this, that why not accept that meaning, which you call the loose meaning of philosophy or whatever, uh, why not concede that uh, or accept that uh, as also a meaningful way of, uh, of, of constructing a philosophy? Or do you think that, you know, it, unless it's put in a particular form, a particular language, not figurative but analytical and so on, it's only that what makes the philosophy? I don't know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand your point of view. Very short is this. I say every, first thing is this, aesthetics is not art, but theory of art. And theory emerges out of some necessity. Everything. They're in the field of humanities or in the field of science. Every theory, what the purpose of theory? The theory's purpose is to replace intuitive understanding by a theoretical understanding. This is the same, same thing. All, everything applies. In the field of art also, we have intuitive understanding, every one of us. And without any knowledge of aesthetics or philosophy of art, we can enjoy that. We are doing it all the time. But when it comes to the question of developing a theory of art, then to replace intuitive understanding by a theoretical understanding and for this reason they have certain definite vocabularies, conceptual tools, only by using that you can have a theory. But what aesthetics is, is halfway between the art and the full-fledged theory of art. This is the stage we are in. But it is the interest of philosophy itself, as I told you, that whether an artist wants it or not, whether aestheticians want it or not, philosophy as a philosophy cannot ignore such an important aspect of life and experience. So it is with 
the philosophical diction and vocabulary and method that he approached it. And that is not done, whereas I use the word expression theory of art in the Western, because we are using English language. In English language, when you use a theory of art, you look at any theory of art, completely different type of literature it is. It is not our aesthetics at all. Our aesthetics is a different uh, genre of literature. That's um, sir, as a follow-on to your uh, comments about uh, use of Nyaya in the philosophy of art, uh, so isn't it true that after the development of Nogbonai, in the centuries after that, a lot of Nogbonai language and methodology was imported into aesthetics? So the question is, what were these aestheticians or philosophers, Nogbonai philosophers, trying to do? And can we not consider it a type of philosophy of art? Uh, Analogous to, for example, what the philosophers, the, the uh, English language philosophers were trying to do in, in uh, Western philosophy in the 1950s and 60s in uh, Cambridge and Oxford. My response is this uh, absolutely no relationship. Only in Nashogandha's little bit of uh, little bit of use of the language is there. Uh, some techniques are brought in in the power expressions, but he has not analyzed this one. As far as I know, I have not other uh, till date. I have not seen a single literature where these concepts have been verified. This has to be done. That is not been done. And this is this is this that uh, this very crucial examples. We can go on repeating, but familiarity is not clarity. Really, can it make sense? A poet can uh, have an answer. I remember once. Bohidlal Mujumdar, a great uh, art critic, he has written, scathingly criticized a particular passage which makes no sense. And after criticizing it, they said, it is from Ravindra And the passage is, Parbot chahi jokote, boi shakhe niruddesh mech, the mountain, Himara, wanted to become the crowd. It doesn't make any sense. Who wants sense? Ravindad would say, Bajira Bukhe Shuthe Ramoto Vyatha. This art is fine, but it is not philosophical art. Simply, I am in any example, just tell me what Chitta Dhruvan is. And I told you specifically in philosophy also, you cannot make a literal sense of it in Kashmir Shurism. You cannot make any literal sense of it in Nana. You cannot make any literal sense. But Nag is not a product like that. Anyway, that's all. Well, time is almost up. Uh, actually, up. Mm -hmm. uh, I now have to invite the next speaker. Yes. But I shall then only mention here one thing. Now, if you mention, I have to respond also. No, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> you do. Uh, this is just a point of fact. I am not giving any argument. No, then, of course, I don't. But the point is that Mahishwara Nayaratna, one of the finest Nayayikas of Bengal, who was a contemporary of Mishatana Vidya Sagar, also wrote a very well-known commentary on Kaupar Prakasha Mambhata. And there he has, he has uh, humorously put in a couplet a very explicitly says, being a great Nayayika, that these Naya vocabulary has no place in Saito Chacha. And his exact terms were, Kathor Tadhika Lapai, Alankara Parishkriya, Bane Uthara Kuttal, Nasa Varna Ranjana. That if you employ these, these Tadhika Parivashas in Alankara Parishkriya, in your exposition of literary uh, criticism, it is like utilizing access and spades for all, you see, as ornaments of Saraswati. It is. They are very sharp instruments, very useful things, but totally unsuitable for that purpose. Uh, uh, only one thing is this it is not only his uh, statement, but also your given your commentary, but actually it has been uh, nullified by the simple example of uh, Raja Ogbala. That's enough. Anyway, they have to use it. So he, he, 
you were aware of it, you came much after Gangadhar, who did that too of it.